collective how happy you were as a group, right? Now, are aggregate measures of happiness the best way to measure? Not necessarily, but again, something we can talk about at the reception, not necessarily the point of what we're going to do today. Uh, in aggregate, you were 103 units of happy uh, when you got my initial gift to you, right? So now let's report in on this group. You ready? You got to get the total. Okay, so this group, group one, now is a 31. A 31. Okay, group two? 27. A 27. Group A? 26. 26. Group B? 29. 29. I will note if you don't remember the last numbers that everyone is happier now than they were when you first received your gift or your endowment from me. But I'm going to let Jesse do the total because I'm standing here. And she's not ready. What do you got? 113. So we went from a total number of units of happiness of 103 to 113. Some of you can guess what we're going to do now. Number groups, one and two. You may now trade with one another. Letter groups, A and B. You may trade with one another. I need a new happiness number. Report it to your captain here at the end. Go. All right. Captains, we got a number? Yeah. Okay. 37. 37. 32. 32. 26. 26. 33. 33. Aw. Poor group A. You didn't get less happy, but, you know, you're still happy, right? So that's good. The other group. Yeah. Well, so it's 
interesting. What did you notice about people's bags once things opened up? Oh, yeah. That's my bad. I should have told you not to eat it right away. <laughs> uh, but what else did you... Did everybody have the same things in their bag? No. No. So tell me about the contents of the bags. Well, there's a variety of, like, chocolate and non-chocolate candies. So that's people's preferences of the kind of candy they like to eat. Absolutely. What else? There's, so there's there's the, the sugary candy and there's the chocolatey candy. What were some other differences there might have been? Some people got more. Yeah. Yeah. Some people got more. Yeah. Right? Who got something with just one thing in it? And you were still not happy? Really? <laughs> Must have been his favorite, I guess. So some people had more, some people had less. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? As, as one of my favorite professors used to say, it's not a good thing or a bad thing, it's just a thing, right? Um, and obviously, you don't know me at all, so how would I know, right? Whether How do I know that Emily likes chocolate more than she likes sugar? I still don't know if she does, but I mean, I don't know, right? And how do I know that uh, Patrick didn't skip class today, and so he probably, uh, I don't know, <laughs> and so he should only get one piece of candy in his bag, whereas uh, Tara Lynn should probably get, you know, 27 pieces, because she worked harder today. I don't know. We don't know any of those things, okay? It's just a thing. So why did you drink? For a chance of something better. For a chance of something better. Or you just value the other thing more than you value the other one. Maybe you value the other thing more. What else? You asked us to. Because I asked you to. I seem reasonably nice. <laughs> you don't know me very well, so that's good, right? Or because someone else asked you to. <laughs> Talk to me more about that. Someone else asked you to trade, so. You feel bad saying no, I guess. You feel bad saying no? Uh, so, if when, well, once you. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I didn't do that, but somebody might have, right? <laughs> Why, why might you make such a sort of trade? What would you be expecting from the other person? Trust. Trust? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you might be trusting them to say we're going to make it. We're going to make a, a good deal, right? What, but what do you expect? How do you expect the person to feel if you've made that trade with them? Grateful to you. Grateful, happy, right? Some sort of positive emotion, right? That's one of the reasons that you might trade. So you might be making off better, right? Like now, well, most of us made off better, right? But, um, you know, you got rid of the banana Laffy Taffy, you got the Reese's Cups or whatever it is that you like the best, um, and, it, and it would make you happier. So those are all good answers. There, by the way, really aren't any wrong answers to the question. So Smith says, so Smith says again, that this is one of those fundamental characteristics of humans is that we like to trade, right? Um, so interestingly, if anyone cares to dig deeper into that, he also says that animals don't trade, and he has all these examples about dogs um, and how they never trade. 1776 is when he wrote that, so there have been discoveries and there's been a lot of interesting literature about animals and so forth that do make these kind of trades. So maybe that's not uniquely human as far as characteristics go, but it is a human characteristic still that Smith would say. Well, there's something else that we need to understand about trades. And while no cute animals on the slide that you would be looking at right now, um, the title of that slide is Trade is Choice. Right? So every time you make a trade, you're making a choice. Right? You're choosing to engage in an, in, in an interaction with another human. Right? You're choosing to exchange something. Right? You're choosing to like literally make the trade. Right? Like I'll give you this Reese's for this um, peanut M&M or something like that. Right? So, how did changing the circumstances, and this is a question for you, how did changing the circumstances or the rules of the game change how you made those choices? What? Does it give up more when there's more of an option for you? Okay. How else might it, that's a, that's a good one, how else might it have changed um, the way that you made your choice? Or the choices that you made? Go ahead. I think more so that nobody is ever going to trade, trade with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, like the heck with crew too, right? Or, yeah, I lost track of what you are, B, whatever, I don't know. Um, how, what, uh, what else changed? How did, how did this changing circumstances <coughs> change the way you made a choice? One more. I can't do all the work. I'm kind of lazy. You become more likely to trade if you think you have the opportunity to then trade again. Like I traded the first time but then stopped trading because I was at the most happy I would be. Yeah. Nice. 
but you, if you might be incentivized by the fact that you can trade more of what you get. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I didn't trade at all, but as like we kept trading, I realized that like I didn't want anything else. Like at first I was at a two, and then I went up after we traded a few times because I was like I I don't want anything else. I'm happy with this. That's super interesting, right? I mean, what you had is exactly the same as when you started, yeah. but you're happier, right? That seems strange. So there's a lot to be talked about with regard to happiness and trade and making choices. But if you study, how many of your econ majors? Be honest. Well, we got to work on the rest of you. <laughs> um, so point number one is, is just that, that trade is, nope, we haven't missed any cute animal slides yet either, Ooh, but we're coming on one, so. Um, <laughs> no pressure, don't worry. Um, <laughs> when you study economics, one of the things that's really important, so we talk a lot about trade, we talk a lot about making choices, right? But, okay, econ majors, here's your chance to shine. What do choices come with? Trade-offs. Yeah, you, and even more general, what's another, it's another C word, costs, right? Every time you make a choice, you incur some, some sort of cost, right? Now be careful, don't think about costs with dollar signs or euro marks or yen or whatever in front of them. Costs are just what you give up, right? So trade-offs are one kind of, we'll put Will on the spot since I can't hire him. So tell, me, tell us about what a trade-off is. Well, I had m &Ms. But I really wanted Reese's, but if I really want to go after Reese's, I have to give up my own. I can't eat my cake and have it too. Yeah, so you lose, you, you trade it off the opportunity you want. There's a specific kind of cost that economists talk a lot about. Um, in my opinion, it might be the most important concept in economics, and it's a kind of cost. Shine, econ majors, what is it? Opportunity cost. Opportunity cost, right? So your opportunity cost is, well... What you forego by taking a certain route. Yep. Keep going. <laughs> the, the cost of not doing something else. It's, a, it's the cost of what you give up, but is it the cost of everything you give up? Yeah. Only the next best alternative, right? So, don't worry, you were right. You're good. I'd still hire you. Um, <laughs> so, your opportunity cost is the next best thing, right? So, talk to me in terms of candy, right? Somebody tell me what you got, and, well, like, what was the thing you gave up? What was the next best kind of candy? Say, I had banana Laffy Taffy, but everybody knows it's terrible. <laughs> Except for three of you, right? <laughs> I had banana Laffy Taffy. The next best thing would be... You, what's the next best thing to banana Laffy Taffy? Because you got kind of close. I have extra candy for you. Um, <laughs> M&M's. M&M's, right? So if you make a trade, like the next best thing, right? So if you trade one for one, you know, you've given up your opportunity to do everything else. So you chose to come here today. Bless you, right? Yes, dear? You can log in. Oh, okay. Hold on. I didn't uh, want to interrupt you. <laughs> you came here today, which I think is awesome and I'm really grateful for. You gave up the opportunity to do everything else in the big wide universe for this hour that you're here, right? Everything. There's nothing else you can do right now because your butt is in this chair. All right, but a couple people volunteer because I might not want to know all the answers, and you might not want to share all the answers. But what's the what would be the next thing you would do with this hour? If you weren't here, the best use of this hour would be what? We should be teaching our first grade classes right now. <laughs> That's way more fun. Right? <laughs> fifth grade class, yeah. oh, double bless you guys for, for fifth grade. Okay. So you, they would be teaching their fifth grade class right now. So that's really like their opportunity cost for coming, right? Neither are they doing laundry, having coffee, um, on Instagram, whatever. Somebody else. What's your opportunity cost for coming today? Take a nap. That's a good one, right? Who doesn't love to nap? All right, pause. Because there is a cute animal picture. Because they're looking at cute animal pictures. No, no, this is the first one. <laughs> Thank you.
to foster, to, to engage with one another. Granted, I told you to do it, but why would you listen to me? You're never going to see me again, right? You did it anyway, maybe because you're students, but also, was it kind of fun? chance to engage with one another and you know maybe you met somebody I mean maybe you met somebody that you didn't know before um, or maybe you see somebody that you haven't seen for a while so engaging in that activity helps you to foster some activity so now we got to get to money point number two so markets can do these fine great like efficient things and so here's the big problem with economics this is why Dr. Calcano flinches and says, wait, no, she said she was going to say economics is good. I am, right? But here's a place where economists sometimes run into trouble. Because markets can do all these great things, right? Um, and one of, at least according to Smith, I had his picture earlier, but you all know what he looks like, right? Because there's like only one picture. Oh, like that. And that's the picture, right? <laughs> um, can markets also foster human connection? And so that's going to take us to money point number two. And I think it's something that we don't talk enough about uh, within economics. So I'm here to challenge all of you to spend more time in economics thinking about the nature of human connection, right? Not with regard to efficiency or price or utility, right? So Smith has this other book, right, that most people haven't heard of. Some of you from Saturday have heard of it. I'm delighted. It turns out, in fact, well, back up. The book that the first money quote was from, can you guess? It told you on the slide, but you didn't see it, so now you can guess. But what's Adam Smith's most famous book? Oh, no. The Wealth of Nations, right? So that first quote was from The Wealth of Nations, published in 1776. It is, I think, fundamentally an economic treatise. Turns out, though, in 1759, he published another book, and it's called The Theory of Moral Sentiments, and that is the first line. Okay? It's a big one. But it's really important. Okay? So one of the common critiques about economics is that we think solely in terms of self-interest. Not untrue, especially according to Smith. But Smith also says that how selfish soever we might be, there's something about us. Fundamental human characteristic number two. There's something about us that makes us need the happiness of other people. Even if we don't get anything from it. Right? You guys said this. If you trade with someone else, you figure they'll be happy, they'll be grateful, they'll be they'll be something, right? Would you trade with someone if you thought they were gonna yell at you? Right? Or if they were gonna make you're such a loser, I can't believe you're gonna do this, right? I mean, you do these things, not just trade, but characteristic number two is other people's happiness matters to us. Right? Even if it doesn't do anything specifically for us. So how are we going to put those two things together, I think, is sort of the key puzzle of economics and the way I, at least, think we ought to approach the study or the exploration of economics. If what we want is to see other people being happy and we can't help but trade because we're trying to sort of better our situations or make ourselves happy. See, can you need a little picture? Right? Uh, or, or to make other people happy. Here's the things I would like to leave you with. Markets can't operate effectively without these Smithian sentiments, okay? Again, that's another whole lecture. We spent a whole day on Saturday talking about Smithian sentiments, but these are things like love, admiration. There are negative ones, too. Grief, sorrow. There's a lot of them, by the way. Uh, but markets can't operate without these sentiments, right? We are not rational, utilitarian, robot-type beings. <coughs> Excuse me. We care about what other people think. So we care about what other people think, whether we're going out for coffee with friends or whether we're in the marketplace. It's in our nature to trade, as we've already talked about, and it's in our nature to sympathize with others. So that's the thing. Trade promotes and requires mutual sympathy. Right? What do you think would happen if we had um, groups of people from other places on campus. Would you trade with them? Yeah. Right? Would you trade with people you don't know? You do it every day, don't you? When you trade with someone you don't know, whether it's, you know, the Amazon bot or the person at the coffee shop, 
Does it make you unhappy? Do you think bad thoughts about the other person? Do you think, well, okay, sometimes you might, right? <laughs> because that ceteris paribus, as economists say. Uh, do you feel negatively about the other party to the trade? Probably not, because you wouldn't trade if you didn't somehow sympathize with the other person. Yeah, you want something, right? You want a coffee, you want a haircut, you want a shirt, right? But the only way that we can effectively work in markets is if we have these sentiments um, that enable us to try to sort of enter into the feelings of others and appreciate their happiness. So, last slide. Why explore economics? Um, hopefully I've made the case already, but to summarize, um, one thing, and here, this is the icky one, right? Like, this is the one that um, we hear a lot about with economics. And so it gives you a worldview that can help you to make decisions, right? If you're thinking of going into policy, for example, thinking about unintended consequences is a super valuable tool, right? Um, thinking about the things that might happen unexpectedly that you didn't necessarily mean, or thinking about the costs of things, right? Um, if you're thinking about what to teach your fifth graders tomorrow, right, you've got to give something else up, right? If we, uh, I can't fifth grade. That was a really bad example for me to pick. Right? If, we, if we teach about fractions, um, we're going to give up teaching about the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've been in fifth grade. I don't have this one time. <laughs> yeah, right? So it can help you to make decisions by thinking in terms of costs, right? Trade-offs, opportunity costs, unintended consequences. But if you're interested in human behavior, it comes for you, right? If you're interested in the way people interact with one another, this is the way to go. I am not here to say that means you should, you know, well, sociology obviously doesn't have anything to say about human interaction. Of course it does, right? <coughs> Excuse me, what I'm hoping is that Maybe if you thought, well, I don't want to study economics because it's all about money, or it's all about finance, or it's all about just sort of material trade. It's not. Next to last, markets can make you better. And I phrase it that way specifically, right? Markets can make you better off in a very material sense, right? You all are college students. I assume you want to get a job when you graduate, right? So you want to trade the things that you've learned, the skills that you have, the experience that you have for income, right? You want to make yourself better off, right? But they can make you better, right? You can meet people virtually or in real life that you might not have met otherwise, right? Think about when you travel and you engage in markets when you travel. It's a human connection to trade. So that's a way that you can, I think, be a better person and make additional connections. But you can't forget those sentiments. If we start to think about markets absent these very human sentiments, I would argue you're doing it wrong. So do it right, study econ, and have fun while you do it. I'm done.